According to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the wait times for permanent residency approval for 70% of current employment-based visa holders in the U.S. ranges from 12 to 150 years. Think about that statistic for a few seconds. What does 12 to 150 years mean? 12 years from now, many of my fellow students will be passionate contributors to the workforce and the next generation. 150 years, on the other hand, is six years less than double the life expectancy rate in the U.S. For these employment-based visa holders and their families, these wait times expectedly cause extreme uncertainties, especially for the legal dreamers. Now you're probably wondering, who are they? Before this past summer, I wasn't fully aware either. Legal dreamers are immigrant children who came to the U.S as dependents on their parents' employment visas. They hold the H-4 visa, a visa for dependents on the employment-based H-1B visa. So they're also known as H-4 dreamers. Due to a cap of 7% for immigrants from a particular country receiving green cards or permanent resident status every year, many immigrants, especially those from populous countries like India and China, are on these inhumane wait lists. This issue has only cropped up in the past 10 to 15 years, with a massive influx of immigrants on employment-based visas. Prior to that, green cards were usually made available within three years, but now the average wait time is about 50. For legal dreamers, 50 years is not a realistic option, as they're forced to deport if they do not receive a green card before they turn 21 years old. The term legal dreamers itself is derived from the term dreamers, who are undocumented immigrant children. The main difference is that legal dreamers came in on visas while dreamers did not. Although some dreamers can follow a charted path for education and employment through legislation like DACA, legal dreamers have no such legislative aid at this time. So what does the American dream mean to these immigrant children whose parents brought them here for better opportunities and living? Although many of these legal dreamers consider themselves mentally and emotionally American, their immigration status is a bold reminder that they are not legally American and thus can't enjoy the monetary and social privileges of the American dream in the long term. This group of teenage students, many of who emigrate to the U.S. at a very young age, also face obstacles in pursuing higher education and employment opportunities. A common short-term solution is the acquisition of an international student visa, or F1, to continue studying in college. After that, they too have to apply for an employment-based visa to stay in the U.S. and then join the already overcrowded waitlist. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the uncertainty has ex exponentially increased. Researching at the University of California, Santa Cruz, I spent my last summer meeting these teenage students over Zoom, of course, and compiling the stories of three students into a mini documentary. One of them is a junior in high school, let's call her Jess, who moved to the US at the age of two. Only at the age of 14, when she entered high school and began looking forward to higher education, did she understand her immigration status. Now, her dream of pursuing a medical education is in jeopardy, as the overwhelming majority of American medical internships in schools do not accept international students. Another is a sophomore in college, let's call her Jane, who moved to the US at the age of three and had to apply to colleges in Canada so that she could be eligible for paid internships and jobs as a business major. As a student in a non-STEM major, she faces additional uncertainty regarding job opportunities in the US as a quote unquote international student from India, even though she's lived 15 years of her life in the US. Listening to stories where legal dreamers had to change their long-standing dreams of their dream schools and dream jobs just because of an immigration technicality reminded me of the infinite professions that attracted me as a young girl. I shifted from farmer to fashion designer to historian on a regular basis. When I finally decided on being a medical doctor, I was completely free to make that choice at my own will. People like a 27-year-old pharmacist I met had to change their childhood dream of being a doctor because of her visa. These stories are unfortunately very common amongst the group of approximately 90,000 legal dreamers currently in the US. 
their stories are only beginning to be shared to the world. For example, the sophomore in college, Jane, before moving to Canada, was, and continues to be, a passionate activist for the improvement of legal dreamer status in the U.S. By sharing her story with legislators, media outlets, and her community, her voice powerfully rever reverberated in the government and was one of many that influenced the proposal of various pieces of legislation, which I'll be talking about soon. And those individual stories are the heart of the Legal Dreamer movement. No matter who the story is about, people react to the basic emotions in the story. And these emotions just so happen to connect us. By sharing and listening to powerful personal stories, opinions can be changed. The Legal Dreamer movement is largely relying on this very characteristic to create change and seek justice. As I speak, people are raising their voices to share stories about their struggles to motivate Congress to specifically pass the Fairness for High-Skilled Immigrants Act of 2019, known as H.R. 1044 in the House of Representatives and S. 386 in the Senate. These are bills that can provide permanent resident status by removing the 7% country caps for employment-based immigrants and increasing the numerical cap for the family-based visas. These bills were introduced in February of 2019, and although H.R. 1044 was passed by the House in July of 2019, S-386 has not been passed yet. Listening to the stories of legal dreamers led me on a path of introspection. These stories have made me realize my own privileges, like my American citizenship, a factor I never really considered before. They also motivated me to contribute to this movement through being an advocate who shares unheard voices to bring about change. Although stories may not directly have legal power, sharing such emotional stories can catch the attention of a national audience whose change and attitude and awareness can help bring legal attention to this issue. As Americans, we've become too accustomed to the mindset that voting is the only way to create change. Although this is true, there is a complacency in this mindset. Alongside the simple fact that most of us high school students are not allowed to vote yet, Unless, of course, propositions like California's Prop 18 get passed, allowing 17-year-olds to make an impact through their voting. More voices and stories in our democracy will help us create change faster. If there is a cause that you are passionate about and want to contribute to, learn and share the stories of individuals who are directly affected to create an impact, whether the impact is through charity work or new policies. This is a powerful and feasible way for youth to contribute to the growth of empathy for the progress of any movement. Thank you.